Hello everyone, welcome to the IPFS uh, weekly sync uh, for Monday 4th of May 2020. Happy Star Wars Day everyone. Uh, we are going to go through the list of um, high priority initiatives and then the low priority initiatives and then ask some questions and, and fun things like that. Um, so the first item on our agenda is uh, upcoming and ship releases. I don't think there's anything to talk about here. Like, no one shipped anything, right? Oh yeah, we we shipped IPFS 05. It happened. It's there. It's live. It's on the interwebs. Uh, so if you don't have it, get it. Um, and then we have uh, a patch release um, being slated to for some improvements. Um, there's some timer leaks in quick. So if you are running experimental quick, you may have noticed some CPU spikes, um, that is being worked on should hopefully have an RC out today for that. It looks like, um, and then yeah, we'll work on patching that out. Amazing stuff. Um, nothing from JS Hyperfest this week. Uh, there will be a patch really soon. I think uh, around passing headers to um, HTTP, uh, sorry, to the APIs over the HTTP client. Um, there's a fix in the queue, uh, just awaiting um, reviews and, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, so moving on, uh, content routing. Would anybody like to give an update about that? Yes. Uh, did you? Yeah, so there is a uh, lovely image there, if you are seeing it, that has our uh, latest metrics. You can see the drop in a lot of the things, um, except for success rate, which went up uh, after the 0.5 release. Um, so the more the network upgrades, the better that's all going to get. Uh, so upgrade. And then this week, uh, in addition to the bugs for the patch release, um, we're working on things for 0.6. Um, which is quick by default, which depends on some of the issues that we're working through right now with patches. And um, hopefully we'll have the ED25519 key interop uh, working this week, right? Uh, thanks to Vashko, we now have that interop testing on the libp2p side of things. Uh, we just need to bubble that up to IPFS. JS IPFS probably isn't going to get um, the ability to run keys before IPFS 0.6 comes out, but we're at least going to make sure um, that interop is working. There's some issues with importing, exporting PEM files that we have to resolve for JS. Um, and then, yeah, noise interop. We've done some preliminary interop testing, but we need to get that full suite of tests all set up. Um, so Arsh is working through um, the final benchmarking there for Go. And then uh, the ED25519 keys. There's something in Sharness that still is expecting RSA keys. I haven't tracked that down yet, but um, that, okay, there, cool. there's a knit somewhere in there where something's encoding expecting only the RSA keys. Hmm. And then Hydra things. Yeah, uh, is there an update on Hydra? Doesn't look like Alan is here. I swear I saw him a second ago. Uh, we can come back to that. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, Subdomain gateway, um, Lodo. Yep. Um, so, uh, from the recent uh, uh, Go IPFS uh, 0.5 release, we've released IPFS desktop, which is bundling that version. And that brings uh, subdomains on localhost to IPFS desktop users. So hopefully that is uh, that update is uh, slowly rolling to, to desktop users. Uh, I, I updated subdomain section on the new docs portal, and we are in the process of migrating a dweb link, uh, which is our like canonical subdomain uh, public gateway from uh, it, it like it is a subdomain gateway. However, it was uh, implemented in Nginx. Uh, we are now migrating it to um, 
to go IPFS, uh, basically removing custom uh, Nginx handling and letting go IPFS do its thing. Uh, most of things should work. Uh, I think the remaining uh, tasks that uh, Michael is uh, uh, tackling is uh, the seamless redirect, which automatically upgrades CID. Uh, if you use subdomain gateway as a path gateway, uh, that hopefully should be uh, resolved soon. Um, I did not start JSIPFS <laughs> yet, uh, but it's on, on the list. So eventually, yeah, that's it on my end. Cool. Um, can we circle back to Hydra for a quick update um, now? Yeah, I apologize. I was so busy writing the update that I forgot to join the call. <laughs> What an idiot. Um, yeah, uh, of course. So uh, Hydra this week has been, I've been spent a lot of my time uh, debugging its kind of effectiveness. Uh, and like we were finding that the Hydra nodes were very, like, Hydra heads were very, we, we, they were just very slow to connect to. They were transferring data really slowly. The HTTP API was the same sort of situation. Um, uh, but there was no like looking at the graphs. There was no CPU or memory problems. So like what what was going on? Um, uh, I eventually exposed the HTTP API to list some peers uh, to find out if like there we just had too many connections and we were super connected to other Hydra heads, um, which exposed the problem that was that was in the kind of infrastructure setup in that Kubernetes has this kind of NAT uh, auto NAT thing for uh, for node port services. Uh, whereby like all of the incoming connections will look like they come from local connections. So that wasn't good because all of our heads were thinking that their peers were local when actually they were not. Uh, so we fixed that, but then that wasn't really the problem. That was just something else. Um, and uh, like eventually I figured out that the VMs in DigitalOcean, uh, the, the standard ones don't have dedicated CPU. They're like shared CPU. And what, what, like digging deeper into it, I spent a lot of time with, with Anton as well, looking at this, and it looked like it looked like the the network was just not processing incoming connections quick enough, and things just weren't weren't chugging along. We had like queues filling up, we were tweaking the queues to make them longer, but um, yeah, it, it just wasn't wasn't working because as soon as we made the queues longer, the queues would fill up, and um, and it you know it wasn't wasn't helping, but like. And when we switched to um, dedicated CPU machines, things magically worked. Seems obvious now, but um, I think it was just the the CPU, like the the um, shared CPU, just wasn't like getting through those connections quick enough uh, for the application. So things were just filling up. Um, so right now there were there are there's like five hydras running with 50 heads, and they seem pretty stable to me. Like they've been running, or they were running for 24 hours or so, um, and uh, and they like I'm seeing now that I'm doing fine provs queries and stuff on RPFS. I'm seeing them appear in the results. So they're being queried for information, uh, which is super cool. Um, uh, and yeah, the, the only other thing that I found out this week is that uh, it's the, the, like we tried to make a data store that, um, that is shared by all Hydras, um, but there's a memory leak somewhere. The memory just goes li linearly progresses until it runs out and then the thing has to be rebooted. So there's a, there's a, a problem there. Um, it could be that there's a memory leak in the, the data store, the SQL data store package, or it could be that um, the like we're just we just have lots and lots of queries to do so we're just running out of postgres connections and there's just a big backlog and um things are filling up um i tried to add a uh, a connection pool with pg bouncer if you've heard of that um, but it didn't really make any difference so i switched back to using the level db t um, data store temporarily um and that seems that seems okay for now um which is good. So we've got stable hydras um, running at the moment, uh, and they seem to be responding to um, DHG queries, which is great. So they are in a much better, um, much better state. Um, so next step is like um, uh, I need to get together like a remaining tasks document because uh, the the hydra stuff is going to be on 
pause for a couple of weeks or more than a couple of weeks um, just while uh, there uh, thing generates a thing that I'm yet to really learn and get into but um, that's the status update from me thank you for listening I know that was really long <laughs> always is um, Stephen has a question uh, can we get p-prof heap dumps yes uh, yeah, of course we can. Uh, for the well, for the Postgres, like when it's leaking. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Just make sure it's not leaking. Cool. I've I've also started. Um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll say that for another time. <laughs> but yes, we can. I will do that when I can. As a brief content routing thing, and and related to Dirk's question about how much of the network has upgraded. Um, I, th I don't know the numbers offhand, but I think the answer is not enough. Um, in particular, there are some nodes that are running like Go IPFS 04.14 and 4.20, like a lot of them. Um, which is why figuring out ways to like more subtly upgrade the network or allow people to upgrade without leaving the other guys behind. Um, but still kind of ditching them is important. Uh, I put a, an issue in the docs last week and collected some feedback and now have like the outline of an implementation for how we can do some gradual DHT network upgrades. Uh, it is in GitHub for people who are interested. When a Dean is president, nobody will run 0 0.4. Yeah, I mean, 0 0.4.14, like, I don't even want to know what's happening there, right? I just, yeah, I, I, yeah. Well, I suspect, I've you. been told that it's those people that are giving us, like, the 500 multi-addresses showing up in your list of, you get a peer ID from someone and a multi-address, and there's 500 of them. I've been told it's those nodes. So I will be fine getting rid of them. Even though they will still have access, we just you know won't use them for routing and stuff. Okay, uh, moving on to the next initiative, it's bit swap updates. Uh, Derek. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Um, so in the last week, uh, we just did some performance optimizations in terms of CPU performance. So it should use uh, a lot less coroutines, particularly for um, for instances that have a lot of sessions. We also improved the latency calculation, for how long it takes to get a block back from a peer, which means that we can kind of give up on a peer faster and go and ask someone else. And next up, uh, we're going to be doing some invariant testing, meaning that uh, basically when we make changes to BitSwap, we can kind of do something similar to a fuzz test and just make sure that everything's still working. And we're also going to uh, make a change to the API or add something to the API so that you can stream your get blocks requests, which should help uh, avoid using too many Go routines as well. Cool. This all sounds great. Um, stream, by, stream content based chunking research improvements. Yes, uh, so exciting stuff uh, this past week. Uh, as part of um, this uh, research platform that I'm putting together for uh, being able to test uh, chunking, we uh, separated a library uh, that basically allows you to uh, ingest a stream uh, asynchronously and uh, write it to a circular ring buffer. Uh, maintaining all the weird stuff like what happens when you get to the end of the buffer, what happens when you have high contention, uh, what happens when multiple um, uh, when multiple clients want to read from the buffer, but at the same time the the thing that reads into it wants to write more stuff. Uh, this library at this point has stabilized. Uh, I basically have nothing more to add or to change on it. Uh, it passed. Uh, uh, first round of documentation review. I still would like people to get me an API verdict, like do we need to 
modify anything at all. Uh, the people who are kind of responsible for this are tagged on the issue in question. Um, because it's, as you probably know, super difficult to uh, test asynchronous, uh, asynchronous libraries like that, uh, I have been essentially fuzzing uh, this entire uh, construct for the past uh, six days now. Uh, we in basically multiple uh, versions of the same program running some with multi-threading, some without, some with array detectors, some without, some with nice priorities, some with high priority, and all of them keep doing the same thing over and over again. And this would expose various problems when, you know, when there is a corner case and something doesn't match correctly. But for the past uh, six days, nothing has failed. Uh, I will leave it spinning for another week. And then I basically can say like, yeah, this thing is rock solid and we can put it in Go IPFS as the initial ingest ingester interface. Uh, the actual tool itself, uh, I am currently wrapping up writing the first new chunker, essentially. I had an implementation like way, way back of something similar. And uh, it's proving very interesting because uh, all the error checking that I added is now yelling at me uh, that this is not correct and, and this is short or this is long. So. Uh, this is like almost there, but uh, not quite there yet. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for now. Um, once this particular piece is done, uh, the actual platform is ready for prime time. That's what I have. Cool, uh, so moving on, uh, Rust IPFS initiative. Uh, yes, we have two uh, efforts going on right now. One is to bridge the gap between what we currently have in Rust IPFS and the 0 to 5.0 improvements. Um, we've been in contact with um, all of you about that since before the, well before the launch, so we're working through that. And then uh, working towards a Unix FS implementation, um, which right now we're just getting you know, looking at ways, rusty ways to do protobuf encoding and decoding and things like that. So that's that's where we're at right now. Are you uh, you're gonna be doing metadata in Rust? Metadata in Rust. Uh, the Unix FS one V one point five metadata. So having file nodes and M times. Right. I think um, I think we're targeting one one point oh right now, but that can be part of the conversation as well as what, you know, if that's something that's of use, then we should consider that. It's definitely something of use. Uh, it will be very useful in the coming months. Uh, and uh, the overhead to support it is actually going to be minimal. So I very strongly recommend you guys look at 1.5 uh, as, as it is in the spec repository because like the amount of extra work that you'll have to do while you are in the context is minimal. Great, we will definitely do that. Thank you. Cool, so uh, moving on. Uh, peer store improvements in JS land. Yeah, so uh, last week I got aligned uh, with Jacob about some open questions that uh, I had in the peer store persistence about uh, how we should go uh, regarding uh, uh, the proto book and uh, other stuff. And so we, with this alignment, uh, I got the PR with the persistence for the address book and proto book ready for review. Jacob already uh, gave some input. And I also have the keybook implementation uh, ready for review. So this week I will be basically addressing these reviews and working on the LibP2P keychain integration. And uh, this will be probably the last tasks on these improvements, at least for the upcoming uh, release of JS LibP2P. And that's it. Cool. Uh, the next one is cancelable requests in JS IPFS. Um, so this is me. Uh, so the PR is there, it's all done. It's just awaiting review and merging and releasing. Um, it's quite big. So it's probably gonna take a bit of time to, uh, for Hugo to go through it. So if anyone else wants to jump in and help, that would be appreciated. 
Any questions on that? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. 413 files. Anyway, uh, cool. Moving on then. Uh, the other initiatives. So uh, Unix FS v 1.5 and Go IPFS. Anybody doing up there? No, uh, there was an inquiry about uh, how far things are, and uh, I believe there hasn't been a response yet on the issue. Yeah, I think it's on the issue because he said that <clears throat> uh, there's some problems running with JSIPFS. Um, it would be super useful for him to run the interface test suite because it has loads and loads of tests around metadata. Um, so yeah, I'd quite like to get to the bottom of that. Uh, so the next one is the migration to multi hash keys in the block store. I believe there is a meeting scheduled about this on Thursday uh, and that's that. Yeah, I guess if Hector's starting to work on the DRAM stuff, then uh, Maybe that's going to eat some of his time. So, right, but know. he's not he's not hundred percent on that. So, uh, I guess at least uh, he will be able to do. No, he's not, but he's also not hundred percent general. So, yeah, it'll probably get. We'll see. But most of it's done. So the resolution is just like stick to what we have, and then we'll just ship what we have and we're done. Otherwise, yeah, we may have to put someone else on. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to push on this quite hard from the JS side as well so that we can ship the pinning improvements because um, it would be a shame to have to do a migration for that and then do another one for multi-ashes or maybe not do it or, you know, let's just make our minds up and ship something. That would be cool. Uh, yeah, so pinning system revamp is basically still that. Uh, the PR still needs to be updated and we're probably going to do it pending the outcome of the meeting on Thursday about what we're actually doing with multi-ashes. Um, and that is it for the uh, extra initiatives, the other initiatives. We have four minutes left. Uh, does anybody have anything for a design review proposal? Stick it in the list if you do, uh, and then organize a meeting uh, with the people who put their names down next to it. Has anybody got any questions? I guess I have a question, general question. What is design request meeting? If I may. Maybe I can do it offline if that's better. Oh, no, we can answer that here. Um, uh, design reviews, I don't think the Rust team has heard about this either. Um, design reviews are basically a time for us to uh, make decisions. Uh, so what happens, like people will make proposals, but sometimes they'll get stuck and like you'll leave, will just sit down and actually make a decision on it. Uh, so if you want them to happen, you propose a design review session. Uh, you make a very clear agenda and a very clear decision that you want to make. Everyone gets together, looks at the design, makes a decision. Um, yeah, it's because it's the, the problem is otherwise, like if you're all async, uh, what can happen is like a discussion just go on and on and on and on and on for months even, and no one really makes a decision because there's no like forcing point. This allows you to like, get a forcing point in there and just make the decision. Okay, thank you. That's the theory at least. <laughs> it's worked pretty well. A couple of times when we've had to say, well, the decision is we don't know what decision to make here, um, but like at least force everyone to like decide that they don't know what actually like what the right decision is. Parking lot. Yes. Go. Uh, Go IPFS is going to try out the Git, uh, Git flow like release model. Um, if you're not familiar, Git the way flow usually works is like you have a develop branch, which ultimately goes faster, is like always stable. We're not doing that. Um, master is our development branch because that's what all users are usually used to. Yeah, that's what we're already doing. Um, uh, we already have a release branch, which is like our like latest release branch. The main difference here is that what we can do now is like master is definitely going to get blocked. Uh, we can keep merge to master even if we're in an RC. Uh, when we start the RC, we're going to fork off to a, a release like whatever version branch, um, and then we're not going to add new features to that uh, release branch while we continue adding new features to master. Um, then uh, when we're ready to cut the release. We're going to merge the RC into the release branch, tag a, uh, a release there, and then merge the release branch back into master. 
um, the idea behind this flow is like, right, we're switching to a, um, a, a fixed release cadence to try to like get things out the door faster. Because in the past, what happened is like, we kind of sort of sit there chugging along building things and then we realize, oh, well, we haven't kind of released in like six months or whatever. Um, uh, this just serves like, even if like, we don't have everything we want, like we just like keep on saying, okay, we're gonna kind of release, we let it bake for a bit, we cut the release, we're done. Uh, so it keeps pushing features out to the user. But because it's going to be a very fast release cadence, it's, it's a six week release cycle, um, where each release really has like nine weeks total of work in it, um, overlapping a bit. Uh, like because we're, we're switching to that release cadence, we don't want to have situations where like, well, we're in an RC because we're going to be in RC in two thirds of the time. Uh, we're just, like, we're not going to cut, or sorry, we're not going to merge any features to master because that's going to suck. Uh, so instead, we're going to be in this mode of like, okay, we're constantly merging to um, uh, to master, but then we only merge to uh, like the release branch um, occasionally. Or sorry, like sorry, we're constantly merged to master, but when we're cutting an RC, we have this release branch running. It's going to be stable. Uh, this is still going to be tricky for us because we have so many repos. We're not going to keep these different branches in all of our different repos. Um, I'm not sure how to deal with that. Uh, at the moment, we're always going to like, keep on merging, um, and like that's going to force us to basically cut like separate release branches for all these the repos because I don't want to run Git flow over every single thing we have um, and sort of like do everything in lockstep. Um, as we merge pieces of IPFS back together, this will get slightly better. But you know, we don't have mono repos, so it still makes it difficult. We'll see. This is the first step. Amazing stuff. Yeah, what is old is new again. I love it. Um, as Al pointed out, we're doing something quite similar on JSRPFS, and it's working well, going pretty good uh, release codes. Quick, no, wait, before you go, we have to welcome Irakli. He's joining the team. It's his first day. Can we get a round of applause and a big like, hello? Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> I'll be probably bugging you all over the couple of days. Excellent. Uh, yeah, there are no stupid questions. Uh, ask, just ask, ask everyone. <laughs> Fantastic. Welcome on board. Welcome. Thank you very much. Amazing. Uh, that's it. We are over time. This has been the IPFS Weekly Sync for the Monday, the 4th of May, 2020. See you all in the future. Bye.